Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to a very special live Q&A session all on beauty sleep tips. I'm very excited to be here with you all, and thank you for your patience. We had quite the uh, weather last night. We had what's called a bomb cyclone on the beautiful Vancouver Island here where I reside, and there were just some uh, issues with power. So thank you for your patience. Excited to have you all here. Welcome, Beata, Carrie, Tamara, and many more who are going to be kind of joining as we get started here. And those of you, of course, catching the replay on the School of Radiance podcast, the place to be for all things, both looking and feeling our best. Let's talk about the importance of sleep. And as I go through information here, I do warmly invite your questions, your comments, any feedback, and also any, you know, skincare questions as well. And just a reminder for those of you who are one-on-one -on -one clients of mine, which is everybody here, to book your 30-minute follow-up with me. You're going to be able to find that ongoing support link. It's a complimentary 30-minute follow-up that I offer for all of my one-on-one -on -one clients over the years. And you can literally book in ASAP to answer any questions. Email response can take a little while. And so I always make sure that I have a priority response and being uh, accessible to all of my one-on-one -on -one clients and membership clients. Let's get into why sleep is important, first of all. <laughs> Let me know in the chat, why is sleep so important? Why do you think slow is so important for beauty and all sorts of stuff? The term beauty sleep is actually alluding to rejuvenation and regeneration. When we sleep, this is the opportunity that our body has to reset, recharge, and renew itself. This is when the body is resting. We're experiencing deep sleep and we're experiencing REM sleep. And if our sleep isn't on point, we're going to experience things like, say for example, anxiety or psychological distress because your brain actually isn't getting the opportunity to, what happens with our brain as we sleep, which is really interesting actually, there's a great TED talk on this, but the brain actually detoxes while we sleep. The brain actually shrinks a little bit, and then the cerebral spinal fluid is sort of like the lymphatic system for the brain. So the brain basically gets a bath while we sleep, and then toxins that have accumulated in the brain go down the spinal cord and then diffuse out for those toxins to be filtered then through the liver and the kidneys. So when you go to the bathroom, that's when you're eliminating waste products. So for your brain to operate in a cool, calm, collected, calculated manner, we definitely want to make sure that we are having good sleep. And that will play out in real life with having more balanced emotions, better balanced hormones, and just your brain being able to better manage all of the other systems of your body. Your brain is basically your master control center. And one of the key aspects to beauty and radiance is to be always ready, be always real, resilient, to be always radiant no matter what. Taking care of your brain, getting great sleep is really, really, really important. Beata, what type of magnesium supplement do you suggest? There's so many different types. What percentage of deep and REM sleep is optimal? Well, I'm really happy that you actually asked this. And my favorite magnesium at the moment, I was actually going to talk about it, is the Qualia Magnesium. So that's the Qualia Magnesium. Huge fan of this. I have been using different magnesiums over the years, and I have actually noticed a really um, quick improvement in my sleep with this. So you can actually get the Qualia Magnesium at qualialife.com forward slash Varga15. That's qualialife.com forward slash Varga 15. So that link will take you right to the magnesium. 
and then it's also going to allow you to save some money. So I really like the Qualia brand. Uh, the people behind the company are incredible. They do some pretty top-notch research on their products with studies to back up their claims. They're very fastidious about that. Uh, I would even go so far as to say they're one of the nerdiest companies in the biohacking space that really place quality in high regard. And I've even done a study on their skin supplement. I believe that was about a year and a half ago. I did a study for them and did see skin improvements across the board with their skin supplement too. So it's just called skin. And that's another product by Qualia. But for the purpose of sleep, magnesium is really key. It's also really key for your muscles and muscle cramping. And many of you know, I exercise. I have a decent amount of muscle on my body. Actually growing muscle has been my priority now for the last couple of months. And with the lifestyle that I live, this is very conducive to being able to lift heavy and feeling strong again, finally. As many of you know, I was in two rough car crashes. So taking care of myself has been a priority so that I don't have headaches, so that my body doesn't hurt, so that my neck doesn't act up, so that I'm not in a crummy mood. So in fact, caring for yourself by being able to set yourself up for better sleep will just allow you to feel better in your everyday life. Hey, Delilah, great to have you here. Hello, Naomi. I do want to share with you, I'm going to get into my routine in just a second, but I, I just want to share with you, my sleep score last night was 96, 96 sleep score. So I've chatted with lots of people who are also biohackers and people really struggle to get sleep scores in the 90s. I've had 100 sleep scores, so it's 100 out of 100 or 96 last night out of 100. And these are really good sleep scores. And um, just to kind of give you some further metrics, my quality was 100, my routine was 84, and time slept was eight and a half hours. And I did not wake up at all. And my REM sleep was two hours and four minutes and deep sleep was one hour and 51 minutes. So as you can see, it's green across the board if you're watching this. Heart rate was 60 beats per minute. Heart rate variability was 41 milliseconds and breath rate 16.3 breaths per minute. Why these metrics are important is it gives you a read on what are some of the things that you did leading up to that sleep that got you those stellar sleep scores. And struggling with sleep is more common than you might think. A lot of people wake up many times during the night. My girlfriend, Lorena, said to me uh, over text, we have a, a girlfriend group text, uh, Lorena and Chelsea, love you both. I know you guys listen to the show too. And Lorena said, you know, my mom, she's getting up at 3 a.m. I said, oh, just do the honey trick. I consume actually a couple of tablespoons of honey a day. It's a really easy source of uh, glucose or glycogen for the body. And also I find honey is great for helping to reduce cortisol, but also having it right before bed, like a teaspoon of honey right before bed, raw honey, not in a hot drink. And what this is going to do is when you go to bed, this is called the honey trick, is it gives your body this glycogen store. Because if you are waking up around 3 a.m., what's happening is your body is actually waking you up to get your muscles to move to release glycogen. It's looking for glycogen. That's why a simple honey trick before bed can be a very quick, easy way to actually maybe potentially help you avoid getting up at 3 a.m. Now, the app that I just showed you for tracking my sleep, thanks, Naomi, great to have you here too. The app that I was using to track my sleep is the 8 Sleep. Some of you may be familiar with the Whoop Band or the Aura Ring if you are a biohacker. No, I do not recommend wearing smart technology. My opinion on smart technology like the Apple Watch is that it's basically blasting your body with Bluetooth and um, EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies, and wireless cellular radiation EMFs 
We know what this does to the body now. I would go so far as to say that EMFs are truly the smoking of our generation, right up there with toxic, rancid seed oils, like, for example, canola oil. And what EMFs do, so if you are wearing a smartwatch, there's two things that are happening. You have something actually in direct contact on your body that's emitting EMFs and Bluetooth and wireless cellular radiation that actually messes with your blood. And one of my favorite researchers, Dr. Beverly Rubick, she's done a lot of work on studying what EMFs actually do to us. She's actually the researcher who I referenced in a few of my papers with the one that I know I referenced her in, in oxidative stress status and its impacts on skin aging. You can actually go on PubMed and type in my name, Rachel Varga, and you will see a number of the articles that I've written over the years. I regularly publish medical journal articles in the space of medical aesthetics. So whether that's rejuvenation for the eyes, for the jawline, and uh, a few others, as well as the oxidative stress one for skin improvements, like how can we get better skin with cleaning up our lifestyle and environmental toxins and stressors. So when it comes to tracking your sleep with different apps, if you do wear the Aura Ring, I do recommend you use that on airplane mode because the first night I slept in EMF protective clothing, this was the lambs uh, shirt and their pants and their beanie. That's actually the first night I achieved a hundred sleep score on my aura ring and my eight sleep. And I'm going to talk about the eight sleep in just a second and why I love it and love to recommend it. What EMFs do to the blood is they make your red blood cells stick together because the wireless cellular frequencies, they mess with the ionic interactions of our bodies. And we can see under live blood cell analysis, Dr. Beverly Rubick, leading researcher on this, when you're on your phone for five minutes, your red blood cells stick together. Then they form chains called Rouleau, and then we get clotting factors. So your blood isn't flowing as freely to your organs, to your brain, carrying oxygen and nutrients. Hello, this influx of long COVID and brain fog. And then also the blood flow from our organs to our liver and kidneys, carrying out waste products from metabolic activities and exposure to toxins in our air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, food, and pathogens. It's kind of sluggish. So that's what EMFs do to the body is they mess essentially with your blood. And those who wear smartwatches to track their steps and activity, I find across the board, typically those individuals are a little bit more high strung. And I think it's also related to a poor blood flow to their brains and also nervous system dysregulation and hormone imbalance. Because when you're talking with someone and they have a smartwatch on and they're constantly getting dinged and notifications on their wrists, they're actually getting a surge of dopamine. And what can happen is then you're just totally depleted after getting all these surges of dopamine. And then your mood uh, is going to be affected because of the hormone imbalance from dopamine. We get the same hit from smartwatches as we do from gambling. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of wearing anything or having the ability to be taken out of the present moment when you are in conversation and engaging with someone. If you want friends, if you desire to be in a great relationship and all of that, just You don't want to be distracted by your smartphone every single time you're in conversation with someone. And I've actually seen this with my clients in the clinic that come to me for rejuvenation and I'm doing something for them. And in the middle of me doing something for their face, which is highly technical, medical aesthetics procedures, they get totally taken out of the moment. It's like, oh, I got a ding. Like, sure, if you have kids and stuff like that, it's good to be able to be able to be contacted. Of course, that's important. But I would say just check your phone, keep your phone on airplane mode as much as you can in a Faraday pouch and forget about the smart watches. They're not making you any smarter. In fact, they're reducing blood flow to your brain. When it comes to the eight sleep, which is my preferred method of tracking because I go to the gym, I'm lifting weights. I did, I actually do two dumbbells at 45 pounds RDLs. So 
RDLs is, is kind of a way to work your glutes essentially. And, and so this is just showing you that like I lift really heavy, so I can't have like a ring on. And yes, I do have gym rat hands with calluses. I know it's not very feminine. However, having muscle and sort of like sculpting your body, having great shoulders, great glutes, strong back, toned legs, toned abs is very appealing and attractive. So if you're looking for ways to boost your attractiveness, being able to go to the gym and start to lift heavy is really, I'd say, important. And my most attractive clients balance their cardiovascular training. So I do wind sprints. I typically do eight sprints in a row, 20 seconds on, about 20, 30 seconds off, actually maxed out on the treadmill and actually uh, broke a treadmill in Montreal last week at the hotel gym. I blew the fuse. Uh, but wind sprints are really great. I like sprints. It's just a really efficient way to get your cardio in in about 10 minutes. But there's also uh, some clinical evidence to show that 30 minutes on the treadmill on a slight incline is also great, really low impact if you have hip or knee issues. Also, even 10 minutes of walking after you have a meal, that's really great for blood sugar regulation and being able to get those steps in. So you don't have to do a 30 minute walk. You could simply do a 10 minute walk after each meal if you're eating three meals or at the gym on the treadmill and your workout with a 30 minute incline walk or pull a Rachel and do your eight wind sprints and uh, hop on and off that treadmill. I mean, I've been doing wind sprints for a long time. It's definitely a little bit more um, pro athlete level type of cardio, not for everybody, uh, but it definitely does work for me. Question here, Beata, how about aura ring on airplane mode? Yes, absolutely. Aura ring on airplane mode is still going to give you the ability to track your fitness, your readiness score, and your sleep scores, but you have to put it on airplane mode. And then we, when you put the aura ring on the dock, that's when you can then see your data. But I, can, I can't wear the aura ring when I work out because I'm lifting heavy weights all the time and wearing a ring would interfere with my ability to lift heavy. So I did wear the aura ring in the eight sleep and use the eight sleep for many years, I'd probably say about two, three years together to actually compare the data with what I'd been doing from a biohacking perspective to optimize my sleep. Now the eight sleep is a really cool piece of technology. You can find the eight sleep on my biohacking page at the school of radiance.com forward slash biohacking. On that page, I have a pre vetted list of all of the different tools that I personally use and feel comfortable recommending that I've pre-vetted just for you in one easy place. It's my job to make your life easier. And then here on the show, I kind of explain the, the why and how I do things. And then of course, in tutorials and the membership, which a number of you here are in tutorials and Delilah, you're in the membership and all of that, um, you really get a little bit more of the behind the scenes. Uh, I actually take you into my home and in my biohacking room and kind of show you uh, the behind the scenes of how I have things set up. Because once you have these things set up in your home, from water purification, air purification, lighting, and also how you have your bedroom set up. This is going to help make your life easier for you to kind of see it. And once you have this stuff set up, so maybe do like one new thing a month in regards to buying like air purifier, water purifier, things like that, then you're going to simply have your home set up to be conduct conducive to helping you look and feel your best with the angle of purification. Now with the eight sleep, there's a couple of different options. It's basically this hub that sits next to your bed. It looks like a computer tower. And then it has some pipes that are set up to either an entire mattress from eight sleep, or if you like the mattress that you have, which I do, I have the eight sleep cover. So that just slips on over your mattress, a little bit more affordable. And what this does, what the eight sleep does is it actually has water that's flowing through the mattress cover. And what this can do is temperature regulate your sleep. So for me, I like to crawl into a warm, cozy bed and I like to sleep at a little bit of a cooler temperature. Now what's really cool, and then wake up to like a warm, cozy bed as well. Especially when it's a little cold outside, 
your bed will temperature regulate you. Or in the summer when it's super hot, you might not want to be cranking your AC or here where I am, we don't even have AC in the Pacific Northwest. It's very uncommon to have AC here. The bed can keep you cool. This is great if you're going through perimenopause or menopause and you're getting those hot flashes or if your partner likes to sleep cooler or warmer than you do, you can actually, the eight sleep will auto detect what temperature is best for you and your partner. And also in different sleep stages, optimize the temperature, which is fantastic so that you can get those higher sleep scores. You can get better deep sleep, REM sleep, and not wake up with night sweats because the bed is temperature regulating you and one of the things that can really damage relationships is something called sleep divorce. So say, for example, you, Molly Eastman's been on the show a couple of times and she spoke about that. That's a previous episode together. But some people go through this sleep divorce and then they end up sleeping in different rooms. And I don't like that. I don't think that that's the best way to go through having a committed relationship and marriage. You want to be able to sleep together. You're going to get that heart coherence as well. You're actually, our hearts give off this huge electromagnetic field called a torus field. And when you are close with somebody else, there can either be a positive or negative interaction with your torus field. So what I'm getting at here is... Also, the energy at which you're going to sleep is really important in your moods and emotions. So I want to talk about that because I feel like that's something that isn't spoken of enough in the world of biohacking and health optimization. Some of the other things that I find really help me get better sleep. So the eight sleep, it temperature regulates and it allows you to look at what your sleep scores were which is what I showed on the camera here if you are watching this. And if you're listening, all I do is go on my phone, go on my 8sleep app, and then I can see my metrics and data. And the amount of deep sleep and REM sleep that I get is really important to me. I want to be above that minimum recommended percentage and time, and the 8sleep will tell me that. And then the other metric that I pay close attention to is my heart rate variability. The heart rate variability metric is a really good indicator of recovery. If your heart rate variability is dipping down, you might actually be kind of overcoming something. So whether that's like a cold or you're coming down with something or you're just super stressed out and your body is in fight or flight with elevated adrenaline and cortisol, your heart rate variability is going to go down. But when your body is doing really well and functioning really well and you're detox, you're supporting your body with enough hydration, exercise, protein, nutrients, taking something like magnesium and honey before bed, your heart rate and also mitigating EMFs, your heart rate variability should be increasing over time. One of the things that's really key for me that I alluded to before is the importance of EMF mitigation while I sleep. So yes, the 8sleep does emit Bluetooth and wireless cellular radiation. It does connect to the internet so that the data on the 8sleep hub can then be transmitted to the 8sleep app on your phone. So what do I do? I sleep with EMF protective bedding, blankets, or clothing. Clothing is really convenient if I'm traveling, and then the bedding is really convenient on my bed. And what EMF protective clothing or bedding consists of are silver threads and tightly woven silver threads actually help to block EMFs from the body. So there's two ways to mitigate EMFs from impacting your blood and the electromagnetic interactions. Hello, the heart, a highly electromagnetic organ and our brains as well, very electromagnetic. And if your body is too positive, and you're not contacting the earth and getting the negative ions from the earth, you're going to be too positive with your ions and it's going to make your blood stick together. And then there's going to be interactions with hormones and peptides and cellular signaling and your metabolism and all sorts of things that you can't see. But honestly, I, in my opinion, I do consider EMFs to be the smoking of a generation. I first started talking about this in about 2017 and then noticed that Instagram all of a sudden shadow banned all my content. And it was really frustrating. So that's why, you know, here on the podcast, I can talk about things in a slightly different way. And then, of course, in tutorials and membership and one-on-one -on -one sessions, 
you know, there's, there's no holding back. And, uh, the same as, you know, the, almost like the self-censorship that, uh, you have to do on social media these days. So anyways, enough about that, but having protective clothing is really helpful to protect your body from those incoherent waves from wireless cellular radiation. And also not using technology plugged in. So distance from technology is your friend. So say, for example, I'm on my computer here. It's plugged in for the purpose of recording. If I touch my computer, that electric current from the, the power cable, and I touch my computer, that's going straight into my body. It's similar to even using your phone when it's plugged in. So it's kind of going old school in your home as much as you can, eliminating all smart Bluetooth technology, whether that's a smart security system in your home, smart speakers, Bluetooth speakers, um, using a router. So ideally, you actually kind of want to go back in time and use wired technology. It's really important. And I had no idea how important wearing EMF protective clothing or bedding really was until I actually used that for the first time and saw 100 score on both my Aura Ring and Eight Sleep that very night. So it's good for me to kind of track and assess these things before I speak to them. And as a biohacker, we're sort of our own guinea pigs. <laughs> but I have to do this so that when I speak to things, as a researcher and as a practitioner, I have to, if I share things, I have to kind of have that data or research to, to back up what I'm saying. Eight Sleep, if you don't have it, I highly do. I highly recommend the eight sleep. I've had mine now, I think for gosh, about seven or eight years and it's still going strong, really well um, made product, huge fan. So EMF protective bedding, eight sleep, taking your magnesium before bed, making sure you're getting your exercise. I like to do my exercise and sort of like the, the late afternoon, early evening. If you exercise in the AM, I think that that's best because I do find I can get a little bit wired for a little bit longer after having a later workout. What are some of the other things that you think I might do to get better sleep? What are some of your guesses here? Naomi. Oh, hey, Elena. Good to see you, by the way. Great to have you here. Naomi, are there materials to avoid? with EMF protective clothing, I would reframe this question and position it more, what are the materials we want to see in EMF protective clothing, which is silver threads. Lambs is really great. It's a little bit more affordable, looks like kind of thermal activewear. And then the No Choice brand, they make all the bedding. And I have kind of like this Hugh Hefner pajama set. It's really funny because it's all silver and it feels like silk. And it is a silver hoodie and silver long john pants. It's pretty funny. Um, my look, I'll either go to bed in like a super or get ready for bed in like this super cute black lacy silk negligee, or I'm in my silver EMF protective clothing. It's quite funny. So essentially it's the silver threading that when woven tightly, so no choice has more silver threads woven tighter than lambs. Uh, lambs is a bit more affordable. No choice is a bit more expensive, but they're both great. And you can find those again on my biohacking page. <laughs> All right. We have a guest here from Beata. Uh, some other things that I do, sleep mask and mouth tape. Great guesses. I don't do the mouth tape. Um, one of the reasons why is I don't really want adhesives on my skin. And I know that things like frownies and all these other wrinkle patches are really popular. And of course, my recommendations are always subject to change, but I just haven't gotten on like the mouth tape and the sleeping with like adhesive on my skin, frownies, stuff like that. But I do close my mouth as I sleep. And if you've listened to the show in, in past episodes for jaw aging, when we have our mouths open during the day or we're sleeping with our mouths open, you will experience a recession of your jaw and the jaw will, your jaw will start to recess back and then you'll get fullness underneath the chin. And, and it's just, it's not um, the best look, not to mention you look like a total airhead 
if you are going through life with your mouth hanging open. It's, <laughs> sorry to be blunt there, but one of the things that you can do to come across as more intelligent looking is to have your mouth closed and speak with intention, not walking around with your mouth open like this. I mean, just think of someone who does that. Um, how's their life? Are they super intelligent? Um, having your mouth open during the day or while you sleep is really bad for your oral microbiome as well. And you're getting that jaw recession, which for women, the jaw typically becomes more masculinized with a widening of the masseter muscles, the DAO muscles, which is jowl, and also fullness under the chin. And for men, the jawline becomes more feminized with, especially with low testosterone and the kind of masseter lateral jaw area becoming a little bit more narrowed and feminine. So there are kind of indicators of our faces as to what's going on with us. Women are going to have a wider jaw. The more they clench their teeth, the more stressed out they are. So why jaw in a woman actually indicates high level of cortisol and stress in their life, which is not very feminine. And then for men, if their jawline is actually looking a little bit more feminine and they don't have this hypertrophy of, of the masseter muscles, which you can develop with um, what, to keeping an eye on testosterone levels and doing the chomping exercises with that little ball that you've probably seen people do. For men, I love that. I love um, the testosterone side of things. I love the chomping side of things, keeping that muscle mass up. That's something that's going to help the guys look more attractive. And then for women, it's actually having this more calm, peaceful demeanor, and it does play out into the attractiveness of your face. So no, I don't do mouth taping. I don't want to have adhesives on my skin, but I don't have a problem with mouth breathing. But I do. I do sleep with an eye mask. You hit the nail on the head, Beata. I do sleep with an eye mask. And by the way, Qualia who also makes the magnesium that I love, the Qualia magnesium, at qualialife.com forward slash Varga 15. Um, this eye mask by Qualia is my favorite eye mask. I absolutely love it. It's very comfortable. It also has this, you know, kind of beautiful, almost like suede feel to it. And it's all black and it's very comfortable. I'm a huge fan of this eye mask. This is my top recommended eye mask. Also on the back of it, it doesn't have Velcro. So you're not going to be, it's not going to be snagging and tearing at your hair, which I've utilized many eye masks over the year, over the years. And I'm finally now confident with recommending the Qualia eye mask. Great job. The team at Qualia, you make great products and you make great eye masks. The other thing that I do is earplugs. I am a pretty sensitive individual to energy, to light, sounds, smells. When I was going through kind of a really tough time in my life, uh, recovering from two rough car crashes and just life stuff. It was very sensitive to sounds and vibrations and smells. It was almost like my nervous system was just on high alert for threats around me. And I'm not like that anymore. I'm much more relaxed now. And, you know, sounds and smells and vibrations definitely don't bother me to the same capacity that they did before. But still using ear um, ear plugs. So just like the foam earplugs, you can get this at your local pharmacy. I'm a fan of sleeping with earplugs for sure. Earplugs, eye mask, EMF protective bedding or clothing, using the eight sleep, having the air purifier in my bedroom, getting red light therapy before bed, taking the magnesium, but also there's a couple other things. Can you guess what those things are? Delilah, hi, do you try to eat your meals during daylight hours to optimize circadian rhythm? This is really interesting. When I start my day, there's a whole AM routine as well. Uh, we're focusing on the PM routine, which is extensive and has taken me many years to dial this in, but my health and the way I look after myself is dialed in. And if you look at really high performing entrepreneurs or athletes or people that look incredible, they're in great shape. They're very dialed in with how they care for themselves. So again, I recommend that you take this opportunity here on the School of Radiance podcast to begin to add these layers and then for deeper dives 
that I definitely share additional information and tutorials and then like no holds barred in the membership with uh, some other things from an energetic and spiritual practice that I do to get better sleep and feel better as well that I'm just not comfortable sharing publicly, but make a massive difference. So the question Delilah proposed was, do I eat during daylight hours? Well, it's kind of that time of year now where it's dark at 4.30. And so for me, I have my work day, then I work out, then I have my high protein meal, and then I typically will hop in the sauna, then in the warm bath, do my skincare, very important. And by the way, any guesses as to what's ready? What's ready skincare wise? Any guesses? Super exciting. Super exciting, especially with Black Friday just around the corner. Um, I tend to eat a little bit later. And why I do this is I've tested this. If I have a really high protein meal, so I weigh about, I think I'm, gosh, about 130 pounds now because I put on a lot of muscle. I'm also 5'8", so I'm quite tall. I have the, the Dutch long legs working in my favor. And I think I've actually put on um, quite a bit of muscle mass in a really good way, but I, um, but I still look very feminine. I'm just very sculpted. Everything fits me well um, and quite lean, but still have very healthy um, body mass index. So I do better with having quite a bit of protein before bed. And typically my evening meal will be anywhere from 100 to 120 grams of protein. I know that's very high and you do want to have some digestive enzymes with that. I actually had uh, some aloe vera last night before bed. My body was just like, have some aloe vera. It's like, okay, I just, you listen to your body with what it wants. When you become really pure and dialed in, you kind of get these signals for your body with what it wants, like honey before bed or honey throughout the day or random things like aloe vera from my plant. I have an aloe vera plant that I believe Chelsea gave me. Thank you, Chelsea. Love you so much. So I don't eat based on daylight. I eat kind of based on my schedule. And if I don't eat enough before bed and I don't have protein before bed, I do not sleep as well. And if you are desiring to put muscle on, which I highly recommend, you're either, you can either lift or be lifted as you age. Getting muscle up, especially in your 30s and 40s, I think is one of the most important things that you can do. Not to mention your mood's going to be uh, improved as well with moving your body, your lymphatic system, your immune system's going to be better and all of that. Naomi no blue light. Yes, you are correct. I always wear my blue light blocking glasses, you know, sometimes throughout the day and at the gym, I'm wearing my contacts. But as soon as I get home, I put on my blue light blocking glasses, which are the Viva rays. And the Viva rays are just very well made blue light blocking glasses. So the daytime lenses are yellow. I also have an eye prescription. So I reached out to the company and said, hey, here's my eye prescription. Can you put these lenses in the glasses? And they do. And they're really well made. I think I've had mine for about four years now and they're going strong. And then you actually have these little clips that just clip onto the frames depending on the different time of day that you're in. So they'll be a little bit darker. Having a blue light film on your glasses from your optometrist is not the same as wearing, say, the Viva Rays blue light blocking glasses, which are available on my biohacking page. Great guess, Naomi. Great guess, Beata. Also, and last night what I did, we had this bomb cycle. I'm like, who comes up with these names? You know, atmospheric rivers. Like, there's so many things in the world that are just meant to get you stressed out and in a cortisol state. And I think really there's a lot of intention behind that so that we get distracted, we get worried, we get concerned so that we get sick. And then we also get distracted from what's really important in our lives, which are my favorite F words, faith, family, fun, freedom, fitness, finance. I think that those are some of the six most important things in our lives to, again, be dialed in with, including your health and wellness. So fitness is kind of that. And in the evenings, I absolutely do reduce overhead lighting. It's very difficult to change out all of the LED lights in your home because halogen lighting is getting more challenging to get. 
But what you can do with the LED lights that you have is get like the warmer kind of colors to them, not like the bright white. I think that that's the worst lighting to have in the home. It's really like stark and like aggressive and I don't like it. So if you're driving past a home and the house looks like super bright, white, blue light compared to a home that just looks more cozy and inviting. It's more of that soft golden light. I like that. So I, I find I use my over the stove light quite a bit. And then I also have these true light light sticks here. It's like, it's like my, they're like my lightsaber. So I, I use this in the office quite a bit. And then I have one in my main living area where I eat and then also in my bedroom. So I really like having a lot of red light in the evening and very low light, very much low light. Naomi, what would you recommend instead of mouth tape for nighttime mouth breathers? I can't tolerate the adhesive anymore. Honestly, it's just something you have to have an awareness of. Mastering your self-awareness is really one of the most important things to do. So from your movements, your gestures, what you're doing with your voice, what you're doing with your eyes, the intention of the energy that you are in, especially as a woman, being in that feminine energy 80% of the time. When you have to work, get stuff done, 20% masculine energy. For the guys, being in the thinking analytical, get things done, accomplish things, being the man, leadership 80% of the time, 20% be in that flow creative state. We have to be balanced with that and have an awareness um, it's, this is biology. This isn't like, oh, feminism, <laughs> the patriarchy, right? Is, oh my gosh, especially with the election. I saw something on social media that women are swearing off men now. We need each other. Okay. We haven't survived thousands of years with, you know, women not having babies, just putting it out there, giving it to you straight. No filter. <laughs> okay. Uh, getting back to mouth breathing, I really like the Envy pillow because what it does is it puts your, and of course that's on the biohacking page. I'm obsessed with my Envy pillow because it gives me really good cervical spine alignment. So when I sleep, my cervical spine is in the right position. And when your spine's in the right position, I feel like there's going to be less of a likelihood for your mouth to retract like that. The other thing is, you know, maybe potentially sleeping on your side. And I want to recommend sleeping on your back the most. And if you are going to sleep on your side because of like hips or shoulders or knees or whatever, or it's just more comfortable, sleep on your right side so that your heart is elevated and your liver is lower. Back is the best way to sleep. Right side is the second best way to sleep. Do not sleep on your stomach don't sleep on your left side. Okay. Really important. And if you have a partner in the bed, like sure you could cuddle, but every time they move or you're moving, you could um, impact your sleep scores. So, you know, perhaps while you're sleeping, like just like get your cuddles in before and when you wake up, stuff like that. But I, I do recommend, you know, sleeping and, and having less like movement around you that might wake you up. Um, and if you can't tolerate the mouth tape as a mouth breather. What you could do is just maybe even before going to bed, having that intention that you're going to breathe through your nose. The other thing is why aren't you breathing through your nose? So you might want to see an ENT and see if there's like a deviated septum. You could have some blockages in your nasal cavities. We basically have three pathways behind our nose and these cavities can get blocked. And mold and things like that can create inflammation in the nasal cavities as well. Heavy metals, we accumulate most of the heavy metals in our bodies actually through air, which is why having an air purifier in your bedroom is so incredibly important. Very important. I also do use um, some nasal sprays to keep the passages clear. I'm not going to get into the details of which one that is. That's more membership exclusive content because that also does something else that can be supportive. Uh, but we're not going to get into that here. Beata, earplugs always fall out of my ears. Well, maybe just get a different kind of earplug. Naomi, magnesium glycinate before bed. Yeah, huge fan of magnesium. And Naomi, wow, interesting. Thank you. Yeah, there's actually a couple other interesting things I do before bed. But, you know, I got to keep it light. And we're already at 
uh, 50 minutes into this one. Beata, a nose strip can help to open up the nose. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, the only issue with using a nose strip is the tip of our nose gets bigger as we age for women. So this is an example of the masculinization that can happen to the female face as we age, such as a widening of the jaw, a bulkiness of the jowls, fullness to underneath the chin, and a widening of the nasal tip of the nose. So am I going to preach from the mountaintops to use nose strips? I'm not because I don't want to encourage manipulation of the soft tissue of the nasal tip. If say your male partner or your guy listening to this, sure, go for the nasal strips, go for those spacers between the nose because snoring is a sure sign of poor sleep quality and oxygenation. So again, why are you breathing through your mouth? What's going on with the structures of your airway passages? This could be an opportunity for you to actually get some professional assessments and advice done. Some people sleep with CPAP machines to basically force air into their airways so that they don't snore and then they sleep. Because again, there's all of these um, layers to getting great sleep with heat before bed, lots of protein, good nutrition, certain agents like honey and magnesium, air quality, dimming the lights, EMF protective bedding or clothing, making sure you're well hydrated going to bed. I do this weird thing. I can drink about a liter of water before I go to bed. As I'm drinking my Organifi Pure elderberry syrup mm -hmm, and raw honey uh, drink here. But I typically drink probably about four or five water bottles while I'm at the gym of this size. And then probably about two of those in the sauna. So what I'm doing is I'm essentially doing a water load before I have my dinner. And then I always just make sure I'm well hydrated as well. So if you're waking up and your mouth is really dry, you're probably mouth breathing as well. And so that's something to be aware of. But hydration before bed, it's like this one really funny sleep hack that if most people were to drink the amount of water that I drink before bed, they'd probably have to go up to get to the bathroom. So again, do most of your hydration and water loading maybe before dinner. And for women, you want to be having about two to two and a half liters of water per day, filtered, of course. And if you're exercising a little bit more, and then for men, about three liters of water a day, if you're exercising, sweating a lot, a little bit more. I am a massive fan of being in my sunlight and solo sauna for about an hour close to my bedtime. So about one or two hours before my bedtime, I turn on my sauna. It takes about 10 minutes to heat up and then I lay down and I love it. It just uses a standard outlet. It takes as much room as you basically lying down on the ground. It doesn't use too much power compared to like a huge sauna if cost is an issue. It's also more economical, but you can lie down in it. I love it. And then you just change the linen. So it has kind of like this dome. And those of you in my tutorials and membership, I show you my biohacking room and my whole setup. It's all very exciting. Um, so it's near infrared and far infrared. So it's basically cooking you from the inside out. And I'm just a huge fan of getting that regular sauna detoxing. Heat is also very feminine and cold exposure is a little bit more masculine. So also from TCM, you do want to balance the hot and the cold. So do your cold exposure when you wake up, cold shower, cold plunge in the AM, and then sauna heat or a warm bath before going to bed. And that's going to be conducive to better sleep. Okay. Are there any other questions here? So of course you got to do your skincare. And in tutorials, I walk you through exactly how to wash your face, um, getting into the basic and essential things like eye cream, antioxidant serum, moisturizer, sunscreen, makeup, and then of course, more advanced protocols like peels and dermal rolling and retinols. And also that walkthrough of how I have all this biohacking stuff set up in my home are all really helpful. So the exciting news here 
is that my skincare line is ready. And this has been years of research and development for those of you who have been following patiently. Thank you for your patience. I was not ready to uh, release this until I felt confident with putting my name on this and that things were just exactly how I wanted them. So what do we have in the Always Radiant skincare line, which will be available? It's on its way to my warehouse right now. A very extensive formulation research and development with this line, and it's very clean. I would feel totally comfortable actually putting each and every one of these products in my mouth. Now, obviously, I can't recommend to do that, but that's just what I could feel comfortable doing. So there is a foaming cleanser, which is fantastic. And the bottle is 330 mils. You get a lot of this. It does take off your makeup. About two or three cleanses in the evening will remove your makeup and just use about one pump, um, one wash with maybe one to three pumps in the AM uh, for that AM wash. And then there's this eye cream as well. And the names are really simple. I kept the names very simple on the products. Foaming cleanser, eye cream, light moisturizer, heavy moisturizer, recovery spot gel, hyaluronic acid, and carbon 60 serum. So basically the names of the products are directly related to what the product does. Very exciting. Delilah, exciting. How does the pre-order for your products work? In other words, when will they ship? They're going to be in the warehouse, I would say, by late next week. So you can pre-order, and then as soon as they're in the warehouse, they're going to be shipping to you, which is super exciting. Thank you, Naomi. Naomi says, well done. I really appreciate you. And it was just important for me because to do this, I've sold a lot of products over the years. I've worked with about 18 different practitioner, medical grade skincare brands, and a lot of them have been great over the years. But I kept thinking to myself, how can I make this better? How can I make it cleaner? And how can we still get the results that we're after with hydration and smooth glassy and clear skin and calm skin with just better, more clean formulations? And I've been able to do it. And I don't actually use preservatives. I use colloidal silver or ionic silver. And the water that's used in the products is six times filtered. It's actually deionized water. So I just had to do my due diligence to work with a lab that was actually going to be able to do these highly sophisticated processes to make this happen. And it, it just took a little bit of time and investigating a number of different labs to do it right for me. So the eye cream is pretty cool, actually. So you wash your face, put your eye cream on, and you will actually, as soon as you put this on, it's kind of like a gel you're going to actually feel a tightening of the skin around your eyes. And when you get this in your hands, I actually want you to do a time-lapse video. So have the camera rolling when you first put it on. And then after about three to four minutes, you're actually going to see like a visible smoothing of fine lines. It's pretty neat. There is like this smoothing effect to the skin, which is pretty revolutionary um, in regards to an eye cream. And there's also hyaluronic acid and thiolic acid as well. So just a really great, super clean eye cream. The hyaluronic acid, that is the hyaluronic acid serum kind of goes without saying. It's a transdermal hyaluronic acid, so it can actually get absorbed transdermally. And again, um, preserved with ionic silver, uh, colloidal silver. And just a super clean hyaluronic acid serum. Love it. Great consistency and just makes a great daytime serum. There's also the Carbon 60 product. So Carbon 60 is a very potent antioxidant that's become quite popular over the last couple of years and pretty pumped, no pun intended, because everything's in a pump, that um, this actually makes a great skincare serum and um, just very nourishing and you, end up getting the benefits of carbon 60 for your body actually through your skin which is great and then the there's a light moisturizer so if you're a little bit more oily prone like myself the light moisturizer is going to be fantastic and then if you need more hydration especially in the fall winter months or after dermal rolling at home which I teach in tutorials um, or say you're doing some in-clinic stuff the heavy moisturizer is definitely going to be the one to do for that. 
And then the last product is the Recovery Spot Gel. I really, really like this one. So say for example, at the first sign of a breakout, or I actually had some chafing from a workout top on my trap and um, I put this on. It's just a really great kind of like recovery type of product. And uh, so it's recovery spot gel. So also love it for spots too. So the names are very much in alignment to what they do, which just makes selecting the right product really easy. But I'm really proud of this and you know, Thank you for your prayers and support over the years. I really appreciate you all. I have been kind of um, filtering out some of the products that I currently sell on my skin shop. So you've been seeing some things go away or, you know, be sold out. I have had to do that intentionally. And I know it's been kind of frustrating because some of you love the, the products that I've recommended over the years, uh, but these are much better. So I'm, of course, still going to be carrying some of the other excellent products from many different brands that are pre-vetted by me and that I've sourced over the years. So that's still going to be available. And then also in the tutorials that are happening now, I'm going to be doing a bonus lesson, walking you through how to use all these products. So if you're not yet in the tutorials that are happening now, definitely register over at the school of radiance.com for that bonus tutorial. Next season tutorial is also going to be starting in a couple of weeks too. The Glow 365 tutorial option gives you year long access. Well, pretty much like lifetime, but it gives you access to all of the next four seasons live tutorials where you can ask questions in a format similar to this, but I take you into my restroom and actually show you how to use everything. And that's the only place where I teach my Dremel rolling tutorials. I have been utilizing my products after Dremel rolling and they are super pure. One of the things that you need to consider if you're doing your dermal rolling at home is that the products have to be very pure and you know free of toxic preservatives and things that are going to cause reactions and i've been working with dermal rolling with my clients in the clinic and online since about 2011 and um, so i designed this also to be compatible with dermal rolling and i did my demo the other day in the tutorials happening now and applied my products on afterwards and I do actually feel that my skin kind of recovered a bit faster too. So quite also, there's lots of great um, research benefits on it. And no, it's not going to make you blue. You're, you're going to go blue from having, you know, an over consumption of colloidal silver, but it's just a great type of preservative that's um, been looked at for a long time. Beata, thank you. Carrie, congrats. Yeah, I'm really excited for y'all to get this. So you can go on my skin shop right now, the school of radiance.com, go to the skincare page, and you will, if you even just type in the search bar pre order, you're going to see the always radiant skincare products, or just type in always radiant skincare, and you'll see the full line there. I will be working on a scrub at some point too. I don't know if I'll be doing a sunscreen though, because I really like the sunscreens that I currently have, like the Tizo Primer or the Tizo 20% Zinc um, Ultra for the face and body. Those are still great products. Um, and then of course, some of the other retinols and peels and, and dermal rollers, those are definitely gonna be staying on the skin shop. So just an update there and stay tuned for some upcoming Black Friday things. Um, so for those of you who are listening, if you're not yet on my email list, so go to the school of radiance.com, you'll see a pop-up, put your name and email in there, and you're going to get first access to different things like events and promotions. So definitely, if you're not on my email list, make sure that you do so that you don't miss out because exclusive offers and also first access is specifically going to those on my newsletter. And of course, thank you everyone for your support over the years. I'm truly here to support you and be of service. And, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you continuing to purchase products through me, book your one-on-ones, the tutorials, the membership, all sorts of stuff. So thanks everybody for your questions and comments during this live recording of beauty sleep tips. The last thing I'd like to leave with you all is the importance of your emotions and mood before going to bed. Very, very important for you to be going to bed in a relaxed state. 
What I mean by this is about two hours before bed, I really want you to focus on your wind down. And that does not include watching a very stimulating show or music on Netflix or having a really intense phone conversation with your girlfriend where you're kind of like, this is happening, that's happening, it's all like really intense, or with your partner, you really want to focus on really creating that peaceful, calm, restful environment before going to bed. Focus on peace, love, and joy. Even if you've had a hard day, even if you're going through a tough time in your life, you don't want to sit in those moods of fear, anger, and shame, they're not good for you. They're not good for your body, not good for your mind, not good for your hormones. So really kind of shift and be grateful for what you have in your life, that you're making constructive movement forward to achieve your goals. You're becoming your best version for yourself and also for your personal and professional relationships and also have fun. Do something maybe in the evening for me, it's working out or reading a book or cooking some yummy food and going in the sauna. All those things are fun for me, but we want to keep that cortisol lowered in the one or two hours of us going to bed and just like feeling grateful and feeling secure and at peace. These are really important qualities for women to feel, to be in that peaceful, relaxed, creative flow, feminine energy. And that also comes down to being engaged with the masculine energy that can provide that safety and security and that leadership. It's just so interesting. I've gone really full circle with all the medical aesthetic stuff with, you know, this and that for rejuvenation at home and in the clinic, then adding the biohacking side of things for becoming as pure as possible, reducing oxidative stress, reducing environmental toxin exposure so that we can get the most out of our rejuvenation and slow aging and maybe even need less rejuvenation, which is something I've experienced, but also emotionally and relationally. What kind of relationship do you have with yourself? Are you happy with yourself? You will build confidence when you're making decisions out of integrity. If you're making decisions out of integrity, that is going to erode at your confidence. So just some things to consider. And again, I go much deeper into some of these other uh, dynamics with how to show up as uh, a radiant individual for yourself and for others in the membership. But I, you know, I kind of keep a little bit lighter here on the podcast, but make sure you're going to bed in a more peaceful state. So whether that's reading a book, listening to some very relaxing music, taking a sauna, having a sauna, taking a bath, just enjoying doing your skincare, um, saying your gratitudes, your prayers before bed, and putting that intention to not breathe through your mouth. Uh, That's all very important too. So nighttime routine, beauty sleep setup. It's not one thing. It's not like, hey, just take this magnesium. No, it's actually putting all these different layers together, which is going to take you some time to implement over time. Uh, But to continue to tune into the show, I'll continue to be that motivating, inspiring um, spirit and energy to keep you on track to really be your best version. Because the more of us who are operating from this beautiful, radiant space, we just kind of help to make this world a little bit brighter. So the world needs you. Your kids need you. You need yourself too. And have a great sleep so you can show up and uh, live your life's purpose and mission. All right. Love you all so much. I'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.